15 times Alex Jones predicted the bio attack being used to bring in worldwide tyranny, like the film Endgame Blueprint for Global Enslavement, which says they'll use a bio attack controlled and lock you down and have drones controlling you because they said they were going to do this. Here it is. Very dramatic. Can you imagine the awakening that's going to happen if they release those bioweapons? After we've warned people so much, God Almighty, I hope the next phases of what we've broken down don't happen. God Almighty, I hope they don't. Biological and radiological agents on unsuspecting populations continues worldwide today. From 1940 to 1979, the vast majority of the British population was sprayed by aircraft more than 2,000 times with deadly chemicals and microorganisms without ever being told. In 1968, the Pentagon tested a deadly bioweapon on New York subways and placed personnel in local hospitals to monitor the effects. Aggressive sterilization of men and women continued in many states until the mid-1980s. In the draft copy of the United Nations Global Biodiversity Assessment, it states very clearly that we must reduce the human population from what's current level of about 6 billion people down to about 1 billion people. In the 1970s, South Africa developed race-specific bioweapons to target blacks and Asians and then subsequently sold the technology to Israel in the mid-1980s. In September of 2000, the Project for a New American Century published a document in which Dick Cheney described race-specific bioweapons as politically useful tools. Hello, Alex. Welcome. Um, I wanted to ask you a question about uh, the race-specific race bioweapons. Uh, you had mentioned in, uh, in the past about meetings that have been going on and been taking place behind uh, the closed doors uh, about uh, what they're planning, like with the 12-year uh, world's going to end scenario, all that. Well, they're introducing into the cultural cosmology that humans are bad, deserve to die, and they're creating a race narrative to hate ourselves and not have a life force or a survival instinct to invert that instinct into an anti-human loathing so we accept the mass culling as a prophecy when it begins to take place. Hence, AOC being told to say there'll be no humans in 12 years. And so that is on the drawing board in some of their previous blueprints would it be exterminate 98% of humanity by 2030, which would be less than 12 years, 11 years. Those are different blueprints that David Rockefeller and uh, others have publicly talked about. Uh, Prince Charles's father uh, has, has, has talked a lot about it. Prince Philip, uh, Ted Turner's talked a lot about it. I mean, that's, that, that's in their blueprint. And then yes, they've had race specific bioweapons for a long time uh, that say you can release a weapon that'll kill 98% is usually the top with these weapons of the of the blacks. So, so they've got bioweapons that are tailored for blacks. Um, but the problem is everybody also has some of the same basic genetics. So you, you'd still probably get 5 10% of Northern Europeans would die. And of course, I'm not for killing any of the blacks, but you see the whole extermination program with the abortion. Somebody calls in about something like race-specific bioweapons. And it's bad to kill any group or race of people. But the problem of the people that produce the weapons is humans are all interrelated. So you might tailor a weapon that'll kill the majority of one group, it'll also kill a bunch of your group. It's kind of like nerve gas. You can fire it at your enemy, but if the wind changes, it comes and gets you. That's why the globalists have all built these big underground bases so they'll survive during this. And their main plan, you see it in James Bond movies like Moonraker and things written by MI6, Ian Fleming, is, is that they're gonna release a bioweapon and call the population to save the earth. And they're kind of doing it through the vaccines, through the GMOs, through the food. Uh, the, uh, all of it is kind of culling us now. But South Africa developed and Israel's developed them, the UK has developed them, the US has developed them as of 50 years ago. Other countries have undoubtedly developed them. You know the Chinese have developed them. Uh, and so it's kind of a mutually assured destruction situation. And we should do a whole show sometime on race-specific bioweapons and the really advanced weapons that are out there because that's a that's an issue that people should discuss but we just sit here and have the elite so-called elite in silicon valley and the un and everywhere 
saying there are too many people. We need a world government to forcibly reduce the population's numbers. But first, you want to flood the first world with a giant bloom of the third world to bring the first world down. Then you release a bioweapon that culls large amounts of the population. And you tell them that it's a naturally occurring weapon or that terrorists released it. And then everybody's got to go into these highly controlled compact police state grid cities for their, quote, safety. Uh, and then that allows over time uh, the social engineering to get even more draconian. Uh, and then basically uh, they'll release bioweapons so deadly that only becoming basically artificial humans will allow you to live in the new environment that they are creating. And I'm not gonna sit here and worry about me. I'll, I'll do okay no matter what happens. But you think about everybody else with this control system, a bunch of followers, with a system that's gonna totally control their life and tell them what they can say and what they can do. And then the end game of these people is horrible control and enslavement and dumbing down for social engineering. If you think people are dumb and evil and stupid now, you haven't seen anything yet. If you think devil worshipers all over the news saying we're going to come to your school and talk to your kids, whether you like it or not, is bad, and we're going to kill babies after they're born. If you think that's bad in 2019, Bubba, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because before the globalist can release the bioweapons, God has to remove his protection. Oh, the devil would nuke this planet in 10 seconds if God removed his protection. And God is gonna remove the protection, but for one hour, one hour and we're gonna be ready before it happens. I went and saw Godzilla last night and for a cheesy Godzilla movie, it's the best Godzilla movie I ever saw, spoiler alert, because of the plot. Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement. That's what you're going to be watching. Environmental terrorist, 12 monkeys type, want to release these dormant titans to destroy humans and save the Earth. It's incredible. And the environmental terrorists want to release radiation that'll kill humans, but they believe re-green the earth, which is something that modern leftists now say, oh, we didn't like nuclear power before, but now we're for it because it'll kill humans. That's main line top leftist. So when you go see this, ladies and gentlemen, you are literally being prepared and programmed for mass bioweapon plagues, collapse of civilization, you name it, and that you deserve it, and it's the right thing to do because there was an ancient Atlantean civilization that was also destroyed because it got out of balance. And so aliens attacked the Earth to wipe out humanity. But then Godzilla, this archetype of the Earth, of the Earth spirit, stood up and resisted it. But Godzilla might have to come back and kill the humans, they tell you at the end of the movie. We're very lucky God's forgiving because the amount of evil coming out of this planet right now is unbelievable. But Satan knows what he's doing. He wants God to remove the hedge of protection. And that's why we've got to fight the evil, we've got to stop the evil, and we've got to just keep letting God know, we know this is wrong, please don't kill us and our children. Because let me tell you something. When you got this kind of stuff going on, wide scale, man, bad stuff historically starts happening real quick. Like a plague that's going to kill billions or a nuclear war. And you know what? At the end of the day, here's what's getting sick. I've got four children. I love them. Born in life. I'm starting to just think God ought to blow the whole planet up. You know what I mean? So that we're not just a factory to kill a bunch more kids. Because if we're just going to be a factory to have little babies so child molesters can rape them and, 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 and torture the hell out of them, then you know what? Just blow it all up, God, because I don't want to be part of this and I don't want to be aiding and abetting it because I can't figure out how to stop it. I was talking to the crew during the break about the depopulation plan and, and, and why at first they allowed the population to bloom, but then later they're going to wipe it all out. And I was explaining different State Department memorandums explaining this that quote the Royal Commission on Population, Commission for His Royal Highness, 
in England in 1949. National Security Study Memorandum 200. Henry Kissinger, 1975, not declassified until 1992. And uh, let me just explain to folks again. I don't just sit up here and say all this stuff, <laughs> okay? And the plan is so diabolical. So diabolical. Keep the third world dumb, don't industrialize them, then let their population balloon and then weaponize them against the West, but then dump your toxic waste and stuff down there and then later basically have bioweapons that reduce their population. So see, they want to use the third world as a weapon first. And then once we've been flooded with a few hundred million you know, per nation of illegal aliens, everybody's going to quietly go, oh, thank God, when the bioweapon gets released that's race-specific. Well, what if it continued to spread? What if it starts spreading outside of a hospital environment? What if it spreads in a migrant processing center? What if it spreads on the streets, the streets of San Francisco, the streets of Los Angeles that are already filthy places with almost no real hygiene going on and they're being abandoned, the homeless people are being abandoned there by you know, the Democrats in charge of those cities. If you get Ebola mixed in with those kinds of environments, you probably cannot stop it without extreme All right, folks. Uh, medical. By the way, I have a good crew, but they're overworked. 